The only thing worse than a lycanthrope is a lycanthrope who isn't actually a lycanthrope. It's time for Monster of the Week. Welcome to a brand new episode of Monster of the Week, the show where we dig up old creatures from past editions of D&D and other tabletop games and bring them to light for you to use in your 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons game. My name is Joe Saya, also known as Dungeon Dad, and today we're going to be talking about a creature from the original 3.5 Monster Manual. This is a creature that I had looked over many times because I didn't find the artwork super interesting and I just kind of assumed it was a spider and therefore didn't read much about it. It. This is one of those prime examples as to why you should always read every entry for every monster and every monster manual ever because some of them are very interesting despite the fact that they just look like something kind of plain. Of course I'm being somewhat sarcastic there but seriously there's a lot of monsters that just look normal but can do crazy things. Case in point the Aranea or Arania, I guess is how you're supposed to pronounce that. But moving on, this creature, despite having a difficult to pronounce name, is very interesting. It's essentially a lycanthrope in the sense that it can change between its gross spider form, which is like a giant spider with two human hands, which is disgusting, and a hybrid form, which is halfway between that and a human, and then a humanoid form where you wouldn't be able to tell anything was up with it unless you were to use some kind of spell to detect that it wasn't actually in its true form. However, the big difference here is these guys aren't actually lycanthropes. Their ability to transform between different phases of creature very much like a lycanthrope is simply caused by magic that they have full control over. They were created this way to have a very specific set of skills and the fact that they aren't actually were spiders can lead to some pretty interesting plot devices. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself here. So first off, we're going to talk about how this creature functions in battle, some changes I've made to the base creature from the 3.5 monster manual, and of course some ways to use it in your game. So whoever's taking the first watch tonight better look out because it is time for... So as I've mentioned, these guys are not lycanthropes, but they can change between a few different phases that all afford them different abilities. Their hybrid form is definitely the most powerful in combat because it allows them to use some abilities they can only use when they're a spider, but it also allows them to wield weapons and wear armor, which they can normally only do when they're in their humanoid form. So the hybrid form kind of gives you the best of both worlds. Of course, their other forms do have applications, but for very different and specific purposes. But we'll get to that in a minute. They're very stealthy creatures by nature, and they have a pretty decent walking speed and a climb speed as well, which would be expected from a spider-like individual. So they're going to be able to navigate the battlefield very easily, I guess is the point of mentioning that. They also have some innate spell casting, which was imbued within them when they were created magically. They can cast Detect Magic, Silent Image, and Ghost Sound at will, which all kind of helps with their stealthy tactics. And three times per day, they can cast Mage Armor or Sleep. These two spells are obviously for when things don't go quite as planned, but Sleep is a major asset to have in pretty much any combat situation against multiple characters anyways. When they are in human or in hybrid form, they can also make two scimitar attacks, and that's kind of just their bread and butter main attack move. However, in spider or hybrid form, they can bite, which is a pretty decent attack, but it causes poison and poison damage. They can also shoot web, which functions very much like a net attack up to 50 feet away that restrains all characters within a 10 foot area targeted by their web. Of course, those targets can make an acrobatics check or a strength check to try to escape. However, it's a great ability for either capturing opponents or for tying them up literally while you make your escape. So with the exception of their magical abilities, it's pretty much par for the course for what you'd expect from a creature like this. But I added a couple of tiny little changes which I want to talk about in... The first thing I changed was I gave them a poison dagger to wield in their offhand when they're in either hybrid or humanoid form. This gives them an extra d4 damage potential which is kind of nice but it also gives them the ability to poison characters when they aren't using their spider bite. The other component of this as well is giving them a parry option to use as a reaction. So when they're hit by an attack they can use their reaction to parry and add an extra 3 to their armor class against that attack specifically. This just gives them a few more options and will make them a more versatile combatant in certain encounters. The only other thing I really changed from the base creature was mostly to do with wording. The way these guys were worded was very kind of convoluted and took a lot of reading to understand exactly how their different forms functioned, so I essentially worded them the same way that lycanthropes are worded in the monster manual from 5th edition, except uh, adding a contingency that they are in fact not lycanthropes. Which brings us on to our final part of the video. 
So like werewolves and werebears and all the were stuff, these creatures are very diverse in how you can use them. You could always do it as a classic twist on the werewolf kind of story. Your players might think that you're simply mixing it up by including were spiders in your campaign setting when it's actually a completely different creature altogether. The thing about the Araneas is they're not really hostile or aggressive like a lot of lycanthropes can be. In fact, they're fairly neutral and they try to just avoid most of society at all costs. They understand that the world doesn't really care much for them, so they just kind of do their own thing and leave everyone alone. If you look at this from an alignment perspective, they are truly neutral. Oftentimes when they are attacked or hunted or whatever the case may be, they don't even kill the person who's after them, they just subdue them, tie them up, put them to sleep, and ransom them back to the person who sent them after them. Because their whole deal was they were created by some dro rebels basically, to be used as assassins to sneak into the Jero's headquarters and kill their high priests and priestesses and all that stuff. So now that they have their freedom, they are simply seeking a quiet life where they're no longer forced to kill. You can always have it so the party is forced to track them down or asked to basically hunt them and again this werewolf type situation only to realize that they aren't necessarily bad guys. They also make excellent NPCs and can be dropped into virtually any role. I can see an Aranea being something very sinister or something very not so sinister or even something benevolent like the head priest or priestess at a church somewhere. The whole idea being they never go back into their true form so that people just think they're another member of the community because that's all they really want. Maybe there's even a caravan of these creatures that hires the party as protectors and guards while they're traveling from one city to the next and the players don't even necessarily know that they're not just a group of regular humans or dwarves or whatever humanoid form they choose to take. Of course, until things go terribly wrong. And if you really wanted to, you could totally do away with that aspect of them and use them as villains. Maybe in your world, the Araneas are very villainous and murderous creatures. I mean, hell, just because of the way they're worded, you could even consider these guys lycanthropes. If you want were spiders in your game, just use these creatures and cut out that very last sentence on the stat block that says they're not technically lycanthropes. That is part of the reason why I specifically made sure they were worded the same way lycanthropes are worded in the monster manual, so that you could use them as lycanthropes if you wanted to. They're a great example of a creature that is more than meets the eye, both from a mechanic mechanical perspective as you're flipping through the book and in the game itself. And that's why I decided to do a video about them because I think these guys are super neat. Anyways, that is all I've got to talk about today. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and hopefully you found it educational. If you do like what I do here and you're not already subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. I've got at least one new video out every week. And speaking of that, I do just want to make a point of saying that this is kind of where the video production is going to start to slow down a little bit on my end. I'm still going to be doing Monster of the Week, of course, but my other videos are going to take a little bit of a hit as this time of year is extremely busy for me with my real world adult person job. So I do apologize for the lack of presence I might seem to have right now and for the next couple months, but rest assured I will still be doing these videos and uh, once we get into more April territory, I will be back to doing hopefully a couple videos every week. And I do just want to mention as well, for those of you who might be new here, uh, in the description below the video, you'll be able to find the stat block for this monster as always. And thank you very much for watching. I will see you guys in the next one. Until then.